I don't think I've ever worked a day in my life because I love what I do. If you have to think about something too long, it's probably something you shouldn't be doing. Don't quit. Hey, hey there he is. What's up, man? How you doing, Jake? I'm doing great, buddy. We've got a legend in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, Body by Jake uh, has been what the pioneer in the, the personal training fitness space. You've been doing this for how long? When was your first, like, when did you first become a public figure, would you say? Well, man, you know, I was the first guy to do personal fitness training and made it an occupation in 19, 1980 is when I started, man. Uh, I was uh, I was 18 years old and uh, I had this I had this dream to become Mr. America. And uh, uh, I'm, I was the first one in my family, by the way, to I'm, I'm the oldest of four. Uh, first one to ever go to college. Uh, I went to college upstate New York. You know, the it's called Cornell University. You know, Cornell. Mm -hmm. I went to Cortland down the street. OK. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're great school, great Division three school. But, uh, you, you know, uh, it, it's not too conducive to walk around in your gold lame posing trunks in 18 inches of snow. And uh, it, it was one of those moments. I'm a big believer in life is about moments. And uh, my mom used to check in every day at college just to see how I was doing. And I've always had this, and, and I know you talk a lot about dreams and passion and all this great stuff like that. And to me, I'm a big believer, as I said, life is about moments and everybody has a dream. There's so many folks who are watching and listening right now, you, you know, who have dreams and, 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 and find this true or kind of disseminate the way you want. But, you know, it's always the people seems to be closest to you are the ones that seem to be negative, if that's the right word I'm going to use right now, because let me give you the case in point. So I get up the courage enough to tell my mom, instead of talking about poli sci or English, I said, Ma, I'm going to go to California to become a bodybuilder. And there was silence on the phone. And all of a sudden, I hear Herbie, my dad's name, pick up the phone and talk to your kid. I'm putting my head in the oven. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all right, the, the bus ride from upstate New York to Baldwin, Long Island, felt like I was going from, from, from L.A. to Australia. It was that long. And I remember my father telling me, listen, you want to go to California, get it out of your system. I had a girlfriend who told me you're never going to amount to anything. You're not you're you're a fat guy. You're not going to be Mr. America. And my friends all said the same thing. And I made the trek. I got here summer 1977 when I still said when the dinosaurs still roamed the earth, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lou Ferrigno, all the big bodybuilders, all the guys that I had in the magazines came to life. And I entered the Mr. Southern California contest, right? We all have dreams. We all have passions and pursuits. Mine was a single, singular focused Mr. America. And that's the name of the deal. I entered the Mr. Southern California contest, right? I come in second place. The guy that beats me is on steroids. Now, wait a second. I read all the muscle magazines. Everybody said, eat 18 eggs and 24 chickens a day, and you too could become Mr. America. I clocked a lot, Evan, but you know what? It never happened for me, but nobody ever mentioned steroids. Now, I'm going to tell you, we talked the truth because I think like in anything in my life now, I'm 62 years old. I've always been a believer in, in emotional straight shooter, talk right to people, everything I've done in my career. I look right at people's eyes. And I think you know the same thing, too. You can tell if somebody's doing a routine on you by just looking at their eyes. And I've, and, and I've been blessed in my life with not the smartest guy on the planet. I was never a school guy. I was a street smart guy. And I could tell when somebody's doing a routine on me. Mm -hmm. And for me, my life was always about, OK, I'm just going to go straight ahead at this thing. So wait a second. Steroids. No one talked about steroids. I'm 18 years old. I have my friends, my girlfriend, my parents all saying, you're going to come home. I had to make a decision. I have four kids today. I'm married almost 32 years. My great wife, Tracy. I've been very blessed, man. Uh, I have a daughter and three sons, ages from 28 to 19. They're, they're terrific. Um, and, and I talk about, I've always talked about decision making. 
And I've always said to them as kids, if you have to think about something too long, it's probably something you shouldn't be doing. And when it was that moment in my life, once again, life's about moments. And sometimes there are great ones and sometimes there are not so great. But this was a moment where I had to make a decision. Do I take the steroids or not? And the reason why I didn't was simple. I was afraid. I was afraid to do it. I remember in fourth and fifth grade, the nurse would give you those TB tests, maybe for your time. And they and they they would just sort of poke you right there. Little progs. I would faint. So forget about putting a needle in my own battissimo, if you know what I'm saying, right? And I made this decision. I said, I'm not going to go back to New York, in my opinion, a loser. I'm going to stay in L.A. because I love what working out did for me. I love how I felt when I was exercising. It not only built my body, but it built my confidence and my self-esteem. And whatever's going to happen, I'm going to make something work. And fortunately for me, right place, right time. I was the first guy and here was the moment because you never know when that moment happens, which is why when I when I speak and talk to people, you always have to keep that uniform on because you never know when the coach is going to say, hey, Evan, get in the game. And if you're not ready, that's the moment. That's the door open. That's when you have that shot to go in there and do what it is, whatever it is you want. And here I was. I was training. I was exercising, doing what every good muscle head does. You know, I was bouncing in a bar at night. I was working out in the morning and catching rays during the day. Mm -hmm. And I was living in Studio City, California, right where all the studios were. And this actress had come over to me, who I'd seen a bunch of times. And she said, hey, you know, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. She says, I've got I've got a commercial I've got to do in about six weeks. I got to wear a bikini. Remember, this is 1979. Jane Fonda had just come on the scene with the high impact aerobic classes, and I was a bodybuilder. She said, could you come up with a workout for me to to get in shape for this commercial? Now, Evan and everybody were listening. I I was looking at this gal. She was great looking. She looked terrific. And I immediately said, you know what? It's not about how she feels, how she looks. Mentally, psychologically, Mm -hmm. she was going to be in front of people. And she wanted to just feel better about herself. Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, I could could come up with a workout. And she says, well, listen, I like you, but I don't want to look like you. And I said, no, 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 I'll I'll, I'll come up with something. And what I did, I started thinking about what I was going to do. And she said, well, how much is this going to cost? And I go, I don't know. uh, Give me gas money for my 1977 white Camaro with Jake 77 on the license plate. As an entrepreneur, you always have to keep a very low profile. Right. You know, right. And she said, could you come to my boyfriend's house and do the workout there? Gave me an address in Beverly Hills. I said, no problem. Got in my 77 white Camaro off to Beverly Hills. I improvised a workout in my mind using a broomstick, a towel, right? Towel resistance training. If I were to give you, Evan, a towel to hold and I would have pulled down on the towel, say, let's do some bicep curls as opposed to giving you two 25 pound dumbbells. I could pull down on the towel and give you more resistance, but psychologically, it's a bath towel, right? And I made the workout fun, a 30-minute workout. I felt an A-type personality. And I used a broomstick, a towel, a chair, and two cans of Mama's tomato paste. Seriously, simple. Went to her boyfriend's house, knocked on the door, Beverly Hills. If you weren't on the cover of Musclehead Digest, I didn't know who you were. Guy answers the door. Turns out to be Francis Ford Coppola. Wow. And I just looked and I thought, wow, hey, this guy could use a workout too. And it was. (laughs) Wait, you didn't know who he was? I didn't know. No, I didn't know who he was. I'm a a bodybuilder. You know, if you're not not on the cover of muscle and fitness, I didn't know who you were. Mm -hmm. So I started working this, working with these people. And they were really digging it. They started going to parties and people started saying, you look great. What are you doing? This guy, Jake, comes to the house. He's got a broomstick, a towel and a chair. He's pretty funny. You know, he eats too much because they had a great refrigerator. And I got to tell you, I had no dough back then. And they had a great fridge. So I would sit down and eat and talk to them afterwards. And now one thing what happened was this really simple. Once again, life's about moments. People started saying, how do I get a hold of this guy? Well, this was back in the day when there was no uh, cell phones, right? You had to list your telephone number in a phone book. 
I never did that. I went from upstate New York to LA. I'm 19 years old now. And one thing about Hollywood is if you're good and people want to get a hold of you and they can't, they seem to want you more. And it became this mystique of who is this guy? Get him. And I'm getting phone calls now on my little answering machine in Studio City in my one bedroom apartment from Steven Spielberg, Harrison Ford, Priscilla Presley, Bette Midler, Warren Beatty. I mean, the, the, the heads of all the studios, everybody was anybody. And I, I learned the greatest lesson and the greatest teachings of all time. These people are no different than us. No different. The only difference is they had a dream and they never quit on their dream and never took no for an answer. And you know, Ev, that's what gave me all the incentive in the world to say to myself, you know what? I might never direct ET2, but I'm going to have my own success in life. And I was able to parlay that famous by association into videos and books and television shows. And all of a sudden, here I was in this magnificent time in the 80s, in this incredible place called Hollywood, in this great country called America. And it's the world lets you be what you make them believe you are. And Ted Turner is the guy that gave me my start on television. He saw an article on me in People magazine. True story. He calls. All right, by the way, I moved to Westwood now, right? So now I'm kind of moving on up. I'm in Westwood. It's 1981, and I get a phone call from this guy, Ted Turner, who I call him back. He says he has this new cable news network, a global news network. Now, by the way, Westwood at the time didn't have cable. So I had no idea what this guy was talking about. Now, just give you a case in point. I'm training all these big stars, and they're casting me in movies. Mm -hmm. So John Landis is putting me in Into the Night with Jeff Goldblum and Michelle Pfeiffer, Right. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm in tough guys with Burt Lancaster and Kurt Douglas. I, I, I'm this guy from Brooklyn, man. I, I never took an acting lesson in my life. No, no, don't say anything about that. I play me. It's what I do. It's all I know. And I was having the greatest time of my life and which is what I do every single day. And that's the thing that I talk to my kids about, too. And for everybody who has a passion, it's never it's never been to me about work. I don't think I've ever worked a day in my life because I love what I do. I know you hear about this and you talk to a lot of people. It truly has to be in your body every day, seven days a week, 24 seven. You always have to make room, which is important, which becomes the fabric of who you are, because I talk about you being a brand and everyone needs to think and understand that. But for me, family has always come first. My wife, my children first. Number one, and anyone I do business with, if anyone ever says anything like, hey, Jake, I got to take my son to school or, has a, or I have to take my daughter to soccer practice, don't even say a word. Go take care of it. We'll talk later. There's plenty of time and plenty of room and plenty of moments for everybody to succeed. And that's been the way I've always done my life. One of the things that I've loved about your story is the longevity and how you are still doing new things. You know, one of my fears is being the aging rock star. You know, I've been doing YouTube for 11 years and helping entrepreneurs for 20. And I always got a little fearful of the, of the rock stars who then, you know, like keep playing the hits from 30 years ago, as opposed to coming up with new stuff. And you're, you're always doing new stuff. Like if you go to, you go to Jake's website, you're going to see all sorts of different playlists to work out to. Uh, yeah. Just launch, don't quit. I see the sign behind you there, which is a line of nutritional shakes. He's, he's got some. He's got there. There, there it there. is. <laughs> we'll talk. About, we'll talk about this in a second. But listen, how about opening up your fridge in the morning and seeing those two words? Don't quit. Every morning, okay. I and mean, we'll talk about that in a second. But you know what, though. It's, it's not about even reinvention. It's about, you know, my life revolves around hope, health, and family. Everything that I've done, everything that I've created. So when Ted gave me my start doing the fitness break on Cable News Network, I was able to parlay that into television shows. Uh, I had a Body by Jake show and first run syndication, then ESPN. I got into the infomercial space, home shopping. Uh, I did books and videos. 
Um, I did the first original video soundtrack to an exercise video in 1983, right? Because I was learning because I was hanging with all these creative minds in Hollywood and the best of the best. And it was like, why not? What's the worst that happens? The worst that happens is it doesn't work. And by the way, I've succeeded a lot and I've failed a lot. And I know all entrepreneurs talk the same way. If you're not pushing hard enough, uh, you, you have to fail. You just have to, you trip up. That's what you do. You got to keep pushing. That's what keeps your heart racing. I'm not a guy that likes to drive cars fast. I have fast cars. I don't drive them fast. I don't like to go skiing off of high mountains, you know. I like playing stickball, bowling, you know, uh, ping pong. I love that stuff. Where I get my adrenaline rush, where I love the action, is in creation. Is in, is in creating something that wasn't there before to doing something now. Whether it was the first linear fitness television network called Fit TV, which I launched in 1993, uh, which was a 24-hour fitness television network. If, if you remember it, uh, it was great. I had an opportunity. I sold it to Rupert Murdoch in 1998 and then launched Exercise TV, the first on-demand fitness television network. And it was just success breeds success. And as an entrepreneur, I learned early, Evan. I know what I know. And the stuff that you don't know, you want to surround yourself with really good people or else you end up a legend in your own shower. Mm. <laughs> what, what, what do you think? So, I mean, you, you started this industry, basically. Uh, you've seen so many people come and go. So many of your contemporaries who also built big names now, you know, just kind of living at home and not doing it. But you're still doing it. New stuff. Like people may know you just for your shakes and not right. even know the whole history. Right. Because it's like it's the new version of Jake. Why do you think you've lasted so long and still keep pushing when so many of your contemporaries, most of your contemporaries have stopped? Yeah, well, thank you for that. You know what it is? It's, it's the energy and the action. And I'm, I listen, I'm 62. I feel like I'm 21. I, I, I train every morning. I'm up at 345 in the morning. I'm in the gym. I do my 42-minute workout. My mind, I do a 42-minute workout that is both mind and body where I visualize with every repetition, I visualize everything that I have to accomplish during this day. So I've, I've already not played through what this interview was, but I thought in my mind of how this was gonna go, where I was going, what's up next. I was a little late coming to you because we had two more behind, you know, early and we thought someone had told me this was uh, East Coast time or Pacific time. So I said, Evan's gotta go. So we had to jump, but it's about, just creating, and I love to create, and, and to do it in a way, and, and this is interesting too, because we all have to give back. Everybody, it's important. I'm a, I, I love success, but I'm, I'm a bad taker. I'm a better giver. And the thing that I've been doing for the last 15 years, I put fitness centers in elementary and middle schools around this great country of ours. Um, I started as chair of the Fitness Council in California here with Arnold when he was governor. And then with Jerry Brown and the last this is my ninth year as chair of the National Foundation for Governance Fitness Councils, where each year I choose four states, uh, pick up the phone and call Governors Cold. I have three brand new one hundred thousand dollar don't quit fitness centers uh, and I call governors and it's a gift. It isn't a grant. It's a gift. I, I, I explained to the governors. It's this is think of it as when you go to your grandma's house. And your grandma gives you a toy or a gift. It's yours, right? Grants, are, they're all tied up with stuff. And my feeling is, there was a great article on me. It was in the Wall Street Journal. It said, Jake is like Santa Claus, except with a 33-inch waist. And I said, well, 34, but I'll take the 33. <laughs> <laughs> and he's from New York. 100%, uh, man. I love it, man. Listen, I know I know we're, we're kind of getting to the end of this. I want to talk quickly about Don't Quit, your new line. Tell yeah. us what it is. Tell us where to get it. Well, give us first this, of all, this is it right here. Well, guys, th this is really important. You know, uh, I've been doing what I've been doing for a long, long time. I had an opportunity. You, you know, I was never a supplement taker, never a vitamin taker. You know, and as we age, you, you need your nutrients. Uh, there's this category called adult nutrition, man. And uh, there, there are a couple of brands in there right now that if you look at the ingredient panel on them, 
quite frankly, man, they're chemical based and they taste crummy. And it's uh, look, my, my my mom is not doing so great. She's in a nursing home now. They try to feed her this stuff. And a lot of people get fed this really crummy stuff. People over the age of 50, especially right now during this pandemic, need to be need to be mindful of their health. Right. And what they're putting in their body. Nutrition is so important. I wanted to create a product. Right. Like I said earlier, too. And I and I say this to everybody. The world didn't need another nutrition shake. You know, it just needed the best one. And I thought that the way to do it, let's do it with a clean label, 26 vitamins and minerals, no soy, no corn, no wheat. Right. No, no added all that other stuff, man, artificial sweetness. Gluten-free, kosher. Oh, by the way, it tastes delicious. Chocolate, vanilla, chai tea, and orangeicle. Now, we have a max version, which is 30 grams of protein and one gram of sugar, right? But as you age, too, you know, a lot of people need to keep the weight on. Even younger kids want to bulk up a little bit. This is it. Here it is. Don't quit. This is our original flavors. And as I said to you, in a fun way, Keep the, when you open the fridge in the morning and you see the words don't quit, how motivational inspiring is that? The words I trademarked in 1981. True story, I was cut from my eighth grade basketball team in the early 70s, and it was devastating. And a friend gave me a poem called Don't Quit. At 14, I wasn't a poet. I didn't, you know, it was like, what do you give me a poem about? And I started to read it every night, every single night, Evan every single night. And it became a Bible verse to me. And in 1981, I trademarked those words. I kept the word sacred. I, I fought off all the big companies. And I thought that quite honestly, that I would end up passing the, the word, the trademark on to my children, because there was nothing that I wanted that I believed in. So now I had books that were called don't quit and things, but not a product. And everything that I have my name on, it's my company. I own. Now I partnered with Cura Dr. Pepper, on Don't Quit and a great company called LA Libations, uh, incredible groups. But I wanted to make sure that if I was gonna do this, the product needed to be awesome. Now the sugar in here is pure cane sugar. So on our original formula, there is 14 grams of sugar, but it's less than the competition in this adult nutrition category. As I said, if you want less sugar, on max version in chocolate and vanilla, just go to don'tquit.com, don'tquit.com, super simple. Bang, 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 bang. There it is. There it is. Let me get it right there. Oh, wait. And there's my mug, too, right uh, there. There you go. So, so when you see it in supermarkets, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's really exciting. The reviews have been great. Online, we've already sold out a Chocolate Max. So get on there early. Tell us what you're thinking about. And, uh, and this poem, which is important, and I think we're running out of time. I don't know the exact time, but... I just want to end to let everybody know this poem is super special. It's called Don't Quit. As I said, I trademarked those words, Don't Quit. I didn't, I didn't author the poem in the uh, late 1800s, but it, it really goes like this. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile, but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learn. And many a failure turn about when he might have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worst that you must not quit. Don't quit. I love Evan, it, man. Guys, go check it out. Don'tquit.com. When you open your fridge, you have one that says don't quit, and then and then you tilt the other one sideways to see Jake's face. Hey. But there we go, push you to not quit, too. There it is. Hey. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, man. Thank you for the time. Uh, I love that you've launched this company, and um, appreciate the words of wisdom today. Hey, brother. Keep on keeping on, baby. Don't quit. Much love. Thank you, Jake. Okay. Cheers. See you. If you want to change your life for free in 30 days, check the link right here below me. Or if you want to see the one-on-one -on -one I did with Wim, the Iceman Hoff, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy them. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.